The time has come for our favorite segment that we can no longer get through without laughing. If you <laughs> like that, watch, watch this. this. Watch this, Ash. Watch this. Uh, oh. Leanne, what do you got this week? Ash, I have a, a fun sci-fi pick for you this week. So if you like Black Mirror and Westworld, you should watch Brave New World, which is streaming now on Peacock. Now, if you've kind of probably already heard about this because Brave New World is based off of the Aldous Huxley book. It was a groundbreaking novel that came out in 1932, way ahead of all of these other properties. And so finally, we're seeing Brave New World be adapted for TV via Peacock. Thank you, Peacock. This is a series where it's a not so distant future. It's a utopian society where there are three rules. Ready for this? Yes. No monogamy, no privacy, no family. Well, that's not fair. <laughs> It's very interesting. And so you kind of get to see this futuristic hierarchy where they have different classes of people all the way from alphas to epsilons. And you kind of see how they're living in New London. And uh, it's very interesting. In order to kind of have everyone cope, they have these little, almost like Pez dispensers where they disperse drugs that you can take if you feel stressed or any bit of anxiety and they're called Soma. And so it those. actually eventually becomes a bit of a comedy because as these interactions are happening in the show and we have a lot of these disruptions, you're just constantly seeing people popping these little like stress pills. Interesting. And it stars a lot of actors who you're like, I loved them, but I forgot about them. Right, so right. You have Jessica Brown Findlay, who I loved from Downton Abbey. She played Lady Sybil. We have your boo from Solo, Ahan. Uh, oh, Daenerys <laughs> Yes. I, I couldn't even finish it because I knew that you'd know who I was talking <laughs> about. He plays uh, someone who's from the Savage Lands, which is basically America. And uh, he then comes into this utopian society and we kind of see everything through his eyes and kind of this mm. otherworldly situation. And then we also have Harry Lloyd from Game of Thrones. Remember Viserys? When he oh had that gosh. amazing death with the gold. So it's nine episodes is the first season. Uh, we don't know if there's gonna be a season two, but if you do get to the end of the episodes, you're definitely gonna want one. Uh, there's a box and we don't know what's in it. What's in the box? You liked it? I really liked it. And one of the things that I actually liked so much about it was the wardrobe. So since it takes place in a futuristic society where um, everyone is quote unquote perfect, they have a really cool, unique sense of like style that they have. And because Jessica came from the world of Downton Abbey, I was very curious to know what she thought about going from corsets to these little tiny dresses. And here's what she had to say. I'm not sure. I mean, definitely, Downton had some surprisingly comfortable moments considering most of the time you're in a corset. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, for me, quite often on Brave New World, I was in very, very short things, which um, when you then build it into an ac a, um, action sequence, you know, things just move and shift around. So um, I think you know, there was more sticking tape that that, uh, that was involved in, in, in the show. Ash, while I'm talking about a, a futuristic show, you've got one that's a little bit set more in the past that's still a fan favorite. Talk to me, yeah. what is your that we're, this pick? We're going back in time because I know a lot of you have watched Community during quarantine because it became available on Netflix. So I'm gonna say if you like Community and Scrubs, you need to watch Cougar Town. The whole show is available on Hulu and it is one of the best shows that not enough people watched. And the reason for that is because of the title. Now a lot She's of She's got the, props, folks. She's got She props. brought her props today. So a lot of these Scrubs team writers, etc., went on over to uh, Cougar Town afterwards. And this series focuses on Courtney Cox. She's, you know, um, She's a recently divorced woman in her 40s and she's kind of trying to get her groove back. Um, so it does start in this kind of like cougar town premise, okay. um, but it quickly shifts over to like just this group of wine loving friends that live in a cul-de-sac. And it is so funny. It has so many like long running gags. It's such a good show and people didn't really watch it because 
the title was Cougar Town and they were turned <laughs> off by that. They literally did research on this and they found that people ignored the show because of its title, but once they actually watched it, they ended up liking it. The creators of the show always talked about how they were gonna change the title and they thought about changing the title and they would tweet and talk in interviews about how they were changing the title. Other titles included 40 and Single, The Courtney Cox Show, The Sunshine State. But by season two, they start blatantly referencing that the title was bad. Uh, in the opening credits, you can th see things like regrettably named Cougar Town. Uh, and then the final, final episode of the entire show, they call it The Sunshine State. But a little fun fact for, about Cougar Town for you guys is there is a community Cougar Town crossover cameo that happens in the show. Um, I probably mentioned in the past my fondness for a TV program called Cougar Town. Here and there. Yeah. So there's a community episode in season two where Abed talks about how he loved Cougar Town and he started a Facebook group and then he was invited to be an extra on Cougar, Cougar Town and then he pooped his pants. I pooped my pants. I did. So there is an episode of Cougar Town where you can actually see Abed in the background as an extra who then abruptly gets up and leaves the background of the scene because he pooped his pants. Yeah, they made this crossover happen. So the context of this, which is my favorite thing at all of all, is these shows were on rival networks. Okay. So the crossover okay. should have never happened. Yeah. But a lot of the writers were friends, so they kind of just wrote each other into the show and made it happen behind the scenes. It's one of those shows that unfortunately a lot of people didn't watch just because it was named Cougar Town and they assumed it was like kind of a Desperate Housewives type show, I guess. But it's really a fun, great comedy a la community and happy endings and scrubs. So, so watch it's kind Cougar of like a, a situational comedy, but the situation is just inside of a house on a cul-de-sac in an affluent neighborhood. Yeah, honestly, there's like three locations in this whole show. They're like either in the house or they're at the bar. They, It's great, it's great. Highly recommend.